Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. And uh, one more quiz that I ask on LinkedIn in our quiz series that what will be the value of M in the given Java code snippet? So I'll show you the Java code here that this is the question that I ask. And uh, one method that I have created, for example, get marks method, and I'm passing some name here. And only three conditions that I have given that if name is equal to Tom, and do this particular logic here and Peter and then that's it. Only two conditions that I have given and I'm passing get marks Tom. So Tom will be given to, to the method as a argument and name is equal to Tom. So name is equal to Tom condition is satisfied. So it will go to the first if condition. It will not go to the else if or else part. So forget about this one, right? Now I'm writing i is equal to 9 divided by 0. So this line will give you what arithmetic exception because a number cannot be divided by zero. So obviously return hundred will not be returned. The moment exception is coming immediately, it will go to the catch block and checking that arithmetic exception here. And then it will try to return 60 from here. Right. But there is one finally block. Also I have written finally block means doesn't matter. Exception is coming or not. It will always come inside the finally block. So here the exception is coming. It will go to the catch block. It will try to return 60. But before that, it will go and check. Do you have any finally block? Yes, I have that. What exactly are doing inside the finally block? Nothing. I'm just returning a 40 here. So what exactly it will return? 60 or 40. So this is where most of the people, they get confused that finally return will override the catch return or the try return. Right. So whatever finally return is return here, let, let's see return 40, it will try to return 60. Although we know that the property of return is what the moment we write return immediately function will return. But here because of this finally block return 40 will be returned from here. So in that case, 40 will be given to M and then the output of M will be 40. So 40 is the right answer over here out of these uh, four options. So yes, most of the people, they have given the right answer 40, 57%, but still some people, they are getting confused that finally cannot return, uh, cannot return anything in Java. Yes, uh, we can return also from the finally block. So let's run this program and let's see what is the output of this. So when you see the output is 40 over here, but if I comment it out, this particular return 40, let's see, for example, like this, now what exactly it will return. Now the exception is coming. Once again, it will go to the arithmetic exception and then return 60 will be returned back because then finally nothing is written here. But if I'm writing, let's see, one system dot out and print LN here, I'm writing by. So will it print by or not? Yes, of course it will print by and then it will return 60 also. 60 will be given back to M and M will be printed means 60 will be printed on the console along with the by. So you can say by and 60 is getting printed here. Now, what if exception? is not coming so let's see if i'm writing 9 divided by 3 then in that case there is no exception arithmetic exception will not be thrown here in that case then the value of i will be let's see i'm not printing the value of i will be 3 here that's okay and then i'm saying return 100 so 100 will be returned back to m no again if exception is not coming still it will go to the finally block this is the property of the finally block is that exception is coming or not it will always go to the finally block so it will print by on the console and then it will return 40 so again 100 will be overridden by 40 so 40 will be given back to m here so again you run it so here you can say that by and 40 is getting printed here right so this is the property of the finally block but there is only one thing for example let's see i'm generating an exception here 9 divided by 0 so it will start giving you arithmetic exception here and it will come inside the catch block. And here I'm writing, let's see, a uh, system dot. And I terminate the <coughs> JVM here, right? So it means this is my exit of JVM. It means the complete Java virtual machine will be exited. In that case, what exactly it will return? Will it still go to the finally block or not? No, this is a property of system dot exit means complete JVM will be shut down. In that case, program will be terminated immediately. So in that case, it will not return anything. See, I'm running it here and it's not giving me any output here on the console. So it's not even giving me that, okay, coming to the finally block and printing by and giving me 40 here. So that's the only way 
if you don't want to come inside the finally block before that inside the try or catch block you have to write system.exit generally obviously there is no point of writing it this is just to give you an example that if you really want to exit the jvm then only we can escape the finally block otherwise we cannot do that okay so let me just comment it out there is no point of writing it again exception is coming coming back here inside the catch block so let's see inside the catch block i'm writing system dot our advent allen that here i'm writing arithmetic exception is uh, coming i'm printing it so it will print this line but before returning 60 it will go and check print by and return 40 so finally 40 will be returned back here okay so you can see the sequence a is coming then by and then 40 will be returned back to m and then m is printed over here at line number 28 so i hope this is clear so right answer is 40 for this question that's all for this video thank you so much